name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So today we observe the, the wonderful celebration of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, that third uh, aspect of God uh, that comes into the life of his, his apostles, Mary, and all of his closest followers, and, and by extension is alive with us these very days in our own life. We begin by asking for strength and also for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Glory to God in the highest of heaven, and on the earth peace to people of good will. We praise and bless you, adore and glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Lord God, Heavenly, King God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only be God and Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, for you alone are the Lord Most High. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria a mi Dios. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they were gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused 
because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement, they asked, are not all these people who are speaking, who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthenians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and the Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord. The response is, Lord, set out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord, and earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Please, pleasing to him be, thy, be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is my Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of that spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many are one body, so also Christ. For one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks or slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, come within our bosoms and shine. You of comforters the best, you the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below, in our labor rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours and our inmost being fill. Where you are not, we have not. Nothing good indeed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray on the faithful who adore and confess you evermore. In your sevenfold gift descend. Give them virtue's sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. So again, it's this wonderful uh, celebration of spirit. You know, we live in a time, uh, kind of the time I grew up, even back in the 70s and 80s in the Bay Area, out in California, and a lot of people talked about spirituality, you know, and it's kind of come to be uh, a statement of a lot of people, modern people, younger people, typically they'll say, well, I'm not religious. You hear that, you know, I don't, I'm not a practicing uh, practicing some orthodox religion, but I'm spiritual. I, I, I have a sense of the spirit, and so I'm, I'm a, I consider myself a spiritual person. I think a lot of people feel that way these days, and certainly I, can, I feel I can understand it at least uh, somewhat. But there is good and important lessons to be learned through tradition and through uh, certainly through scripture, which the church, the Catholic church, roots itself in uh, this, the scriptures from 2,000 years ago and, and beyond to Jesus' time. But I just wanted to kind of do an overview and, and kind of bring up to date the way I see uh, the spirit, this third, as I said, the third aspect of God that we talk about, you know, in, in our Trinitarian, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that Trinitarian religion that, that is, or, or theology that is our our Catholic faith. So, uh, you know, if you took an old globe, those of us who are probably over 50, you can remember the old uh, round globe that we used to have in the, the grammar school classrooms. And if you just spun it around and put your finger anywhere onto any, any land mass and go back a few thousand years, I bet the people of that area and that time would have a sense of the Creator. We could use the word God, we could use the word Montezuma or Itoi or all kinds of other names or words or traditions, but just this sense of the, the force, the, the power that brings that sun, that warms them from winter cold, or, or brings the rain and waters the fields that, that helps the, 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 the growth, that, that feeds the, the people themselves or maybe the animals that they also uh, herd and, and rely on for their food and their sustenance. These were just the patterns of nature, and, and human beings all around the world, going back uh, to probably the beginning, had a sense of somehow trying to be in harmony with this, these mysterious forces that somehow brought these things in their time of need. Uh, rain, you know, and, and sun, uh, warmth, uh, the, the returning migrations, patterns of animals and birds and, and fish that they relied upon. So this was a sense of God, the Creator. And then we as Christians believe that Jesus comes into the world. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole Old Testament, but Jesus was predicted. He was pointed to and, and spoken of, uh, not in great detail, but, but there would be a Savior, someone who would lead the people, uh, these chosen people, Israel. And uh, certainly when Christ came, we know from re reading the Gospels and hearing about his particular struggles, he wasn't accepted, not, not in a wide uh, wide way, and so much so that he was put to death. Now, as that faith has grown, uh, Jesus being born, you know, the Creator saying, well, I'm going to, to bring human beings uh, along uh, into my love and, and, and to a deeper understanding of, of who I am and their relationship with me, how I would like it to be, how I would like them to relate to one another, 
Uh, he sends Christ into the world, and uh, but because Christ, we believe, is true God and true man, he's born into one particular place at one particular time. So now we think, well, if, if God, the Creator, is just going to, to pull Jesus out, you know, he's died, risen, and ascended into heaven, uh, even his body is no longer uh, in the earth as, as human bodies, uh, their remains here. Uh, God, Jesus, is are, are ascended, taken up into heaven. But God is not going to leave us orphans or abandoned or just have those two parts of the story uh, be all that there is. It is God's plan, and we know this through the words of Jesus himself, partially what we just heard here, that there is a spirit that remains in the world. And it is that spirit that should give us some consolation and help to give us uh, not outright proof. It's, spirits can't be measured, they can't be quantified or, or qualified in, in, in scientific ways that we're maybe used to. They can't be videotaped, they can't be recorded in an audio way. Or it's, it's just not that simple. We're talking about something quite mysterious, but nevertheless, we believe to be real, very real. So uh, this spirit is left in the world. And Jesus talks about it as the spirit of truth. And that, if we just stop and think about it for a, just a second, it's, that's, that's the best word that we could use to describe it. Because it is that very spirit of truth that we have to look at Jesus' story. And, and even by extension into the Older Testament, the story of God, Yahweh, the Creator. Right? Do we believe that Jesus truly lived? Do we believe that he truly was the Son of God? Do we believe that he truly rose from the dead? It's that this same spirit that it encourages us. It's a spirit of truth that should fill us up as we reflect on these questions, these questions that are really the most important questions we could ask ourselves, I think, in life. Because if we answer them in the affirmative, as we should as Christians, we certainly should and do regularly, but to, to reflect, we, we can never plumb the depths of, of the implications, the, the significance of answering those questions in the affirmative. We can never get to the, the, the depths in this life. We can never fully realize just what that means. And yet, brothers and sisters, it should transform our lives. Every, every time we answer those questions in the affirmative, we should recommit ourselves to, to living more strongly in the footsteps of Christ, in the ways of uh, his example, uh, of his teachings, seeking the Spirit, seeking the very gifts of the Spirit that Jesus promised, and, and recognizing where we, uh, where we lie, where we are with that same Spirit. What gifts have we been given? And how then are we to use those for the building up of the same greatest truth that has really been ever known to man, or ever the greatest claim that's ever been pro professed or, or uh, uh, proclaimed to humanity. So it's a great uh, and mysterious but powerful uh, celebration. This is a celebration of Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit. You know, that beautiful uh, second reading I have to comment on too because there's many ways that we can kind of see if we, how we feel with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that first line here from the reading we just heard, uh, St. Paul's, first letter to the Corinthians where he, he states, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I always think it's a, it's a wonderful exercise in, in uh, the feeling of faith, kind of having a sense within our hearts of that faith, how, it, how we are with it, inviting a confirmation class to stand up and just one by one, not in any kind of a way of an examination, but just one by one, hear each individual person make that claim, that statement, Jesus is Lord. And I believe, brothers and sisters, by saying that, uh, we can feel, truly feel, the Spirit within us. We make our profession of faith now using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Since God endows us with the gift of his own life, by imparting the Holy Spirit, let us come to him. With prayers inspired by the Holy Spirit, let us come to him alive and free in the divine presence. For all who have been signed and sealed with the Holy Spirit, that this church may be united as one body made of many parts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the peoples of the world who do not know God, that the spirit of truth proclaimed to every nation may indeed renew the face of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the outpouring of the spirit of peace, that men and women may know the forgiveness of their sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this community gathered by God, that the spirit who makes holy our Eucharistic gifts may strengthen and refresh us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We want to also remember those still struggling with uh, the effects of COVID, particularly in India. Also, we pray for an end to the violence in the Middle East, uh, the strife there. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we want to also give thanksgiving for the students as they end their year. Uh, congratulations to those who will be graduating. And, Great Thanksgiving for teachers, parents of students, and the st students who struggled through a very difficult year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the intention of this particular Mass, we pray for Mary Kay Graham and daughter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father all-powerful, receive these prayers from a people made one by the Holy Spirit who dwells always within us. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given us and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice might be acceptable to you. God, our Almighty Father. Grant, Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in a profession of one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit down upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks. He broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church, Lord, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed husband Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so it the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free of sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So I wish all of you, wherever you may be, peace in your hearts, peace in your families, peace in your places of work. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us 
peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that it, this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. As far as announcements go, I just want to uh, extend and again, congratulations to those who are graduating. We had a, a mass a week ago for Baba Kivri High School graduates. That was very nice to celebrate with them and their families out in front of church. And then uh, by the time you see this, the eighth graders from our grammar school will have graduated. So again, we extend a warm uh, blessing and congratulations to all of them as well. And then we'll be celebrating with other high schoolers and those who received GED and also college diplomas this, uh, in these times, so congratulations to all. The Lord be with you. The blessing of Almighty God be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So go forth, the Mass is ended, Alleluia, Alleluia.